A girl named Annie celebrates her 14th birthday with her family at the dinner table, opening presents. Her dad, Will, brings out a big box she's been eagerly waiting for. Inside, she finds a shiny new MacBook. Annie stays up late using her new laptop until her dad tells her it's time for bed. The girl says she is chatting with a high school boy from California who also plays volleyball like her. At dinner, Annie keeps texting Charlie until her mom reminds her to have no phones at the table. Her brother Peter asks about Charlie, and Annie tells her family all about him. Later, in her room, Annie tries to take pictures to send to Charlie, who had requested one. The following day, Annie rushes home from school to tell Charlie some exciting news. He congratulates her and compliments her on her picture from the night before. Annie asks for his picture in return, and Charlie admits he's not 16, but actually 20, explaining that he pretended to be high school as he does not want Annie to feel uncomfortable getting advice from a college volleyball player. Annie, feeling cautious, looks around to make sure no one's listening before expressing her continued affection for Charlie, calling him sweet. Charlie, claiming he has to go to practice, sends her some pictures of himself. They chat in bed, feeling a strong connection and understanding between them. They can't video call because Charlie's camera isn't working, Nonetheless, Annie shares her desire for Charlie to be closer, and he responds with suggestive comments. One day, Charlie drops another bombshell as he admits that he's actually a 25-year-old graduate student. Annie is shocked, and as they talk on the phone to clear things up, the girl starts asking personal questions. The next morning, Annie's family is helping her brother, Peter, move into his college dorm. Annie informs Charlie, who suggests they meet. After saying goodbye to Peter, Annie heads to a mall to meet Charlie. While on the phone with him, a man approaches her, claiming to be Charlie. He looks way much older than 25, leaving Annie confused and uncomfortable. He tries to calm her down, insisting that age doesn't matter and reminding her of their bond. Annie starts crying, and Charlie manipulates her by questioning her maturity and ability to handle the situation. He tells her he loves her and age shouldn't matter. They walk together, and Annie's friend Brittany sees them while she's working. The two are in Charlie's car, and Annie opens the gift he got for her. She looks inside the bag, surprised and uneasy, and Charlie tells her it's nice and that he's been thinking of her wearing it. Charlie's in his motel room, and Annie steps out wearing the seductive red lace outfit that he gave her. He says she looks good, then asks her to sit next to him. Charlie compliments her appearance since she's insecure about it and Annie looks like she wants to cry. He starts touching her and unbeknownst to Annie is a hidden camera recording them. He starts kissing her and pushes her onto the bed while she begs him to stop. Annie is trembling but becomes blank as Charlie gets up and unbuckles his belt. Annie has dinner with her family and her parents ask about school. She is quiet and doesn't respond, not touching her food either. She types quickly on her laptop, asking where Charlie is and why he isn't answering her. She cries in the locker room, trying to call Charlie, but still no reply. Brittany demands an explanation and mentions seeing them at the mall, but Annie just says they hung out and it's not a big deal. Annie goes to class, but is called to the counselor's office. She sees Brittany there and later walks out of school with the police following her, attracting a lot of attention from students. Will receives a call at his workplace and rushes to the hospital, where Lynn, his wife, is anxiously waiting. An officer informs them that Annie might have been assaulted by her older boyfriend, who's approximately 35 years old. She recounts the weekend's events, causing her parents to nearly collapse from shock. Annie undergoes an examination while being comforted by a woman. When she emerges from the room, her parents envelop her in a tearful embrace. The woman with Annie introduces herself as Gail, a counselor. Shortly after, she introduces Doug, who is an FBI special agent. Annie later retrieves the lace set she wore, intending to submit it for investigation. Doug explains that the process could take a while due to the workload. As Doug examines Annie's laptop, he asks her to try reaching out to Charlie to trace his whereabouts. Annie sends him a message while another agent works on tracking him down. Charlie responds, and they gather to analyze the information. Doug guides Annie on what to say to Charlie, but suddenly she receives a call from a private number. She answers, and Charlie inquires about her parents' whereabouts. Annie says that they are away, but then her mother's phone rings, and Charlie chastises her before abruptly ending the call. 
He goes offline, and the other agent says he wasn't able to track him. Annie becomes overwhelmed and storms out of the room. Doug assures Will they'll do everything possible and tells him to call if anything happens. Will is preoccupied at work, unable to shake off thoughts of what happened to his daughter. He gives her a new phone but warns her not to contact Charlie, threatening to take it back if she does. Will takes action and looks into a perv tracker website. Annie attends counseling with Gail and downplays the seriousness of the situation, suggesting that many girls her age have experienced similar things. She mentions that her dad would have liked Charlie because he's sweet and funny. Annie continues to praise Charlie, and Gail reminds her about their age difference. She insists that love conquers all, but Gail tries to explain why relationships between people with the same age as them are not appropriate. Annie remains unconcerned, believing Charlie loves her and understands his inability to contact her due to FBI involvement. She even expresses hope that Charlie is doing okay. Will receives a call from Doug while going through airport security. Doug reveals that Charlie is using a false name and operates in a well-organized system to do his crimes. Will arrives home and asks Lynn to check a website that maps nearby offenders. Annie asks, what are they doing? And Will asks her help identify Charlie among the list of offenders. Annie insists none of them is Charlie and gets upset with her parents for getting too worked up about the situation. At another counseling session with Gail, Annie expresses frustration with her home life and her dad's desire to kill Charlie. She misses Charlie and hopes he'll call so they can discuss how to move forward. Gail points out they haven't yet discussed what happened at the motel, and Annie says that it felt like it really didn't happen to her. Gail says that it is a psychological mechanism, which meant that she was actually frightened when that happened. Annie becomes upset and leaves the session early. Meanwhile, Doug observes as a man named Jerry, meeting with a teenage girl. Jerry becomes suspicious of his surroundings and tries to escape when he realizes it's a setup, but they are able to catch and restrain him. Will meets with Doug, who informs him about the man they captured and how they got similar chatting style with Charlie. Will asks to see him, but the FBI agent says he can't because the investigation is still ongoing. However, Doug delivers good news that they found DNA on Annie's clothing and will provide updates once they find a match. While Doug leaves for a moment, Will examines his bag. He shows the chat logs between Annie and Charlie to his wife and urges her to read it. Will reads aloud the inappropriate messages, leaving Lynn shocked. They begin arguing as Lynn is reluctant to confront Annie about it, but her husband insists on addressing the issue. Will attend a party for the launching of a teenage magazine. He suddenly feels dizzy and sees hallucinations of his daughter in one of the pictures on the wall. He later visits a house identified in one of the perv tracker profiles. During dinner, Lynn says that Peter might come home for Halloween and mentions that they haven't told him about what happened. Annie returns to school, where Brittany apologizes to her. Annie refuses to accept the apology and instructs Brittany not to speak to her again. That evening, Will asks his daughter if Charlie has been contacting her, which she denies. Annie questions his concern, and Will confronts her for lying about Charlie's true age. He tells her that she should have told him or her mom. Annie fails to grasp the seriousness of the situation and accuses her father of overreacting. She defends Charlie, insisting he's not a bad person and that she wasn't taken advantage of. Angry and hurt, Will leaves as Annie tells him she hates him. Seeking guidance, Will approaches Gail to inquire about Annie's well-being, but she can't provide patient information. He confides in her that the incident continues to haunt him and he's having dream about beating Charlie up so bad. Will is not only upset about what happened, but also because he feels that he failed to protect Annie. Will visits a gun shop and drifts off as he imagines shooting the man who resides in the house he's been observing. The following day, Will picks up Peter at the station, noticing his father's distressed appearance. Back at home, the family gathers, all dressed up for Halloween. Peter apologizes to Annie for not emailing much and his overly concern makes Annie think that her older brother already knew what happened. Annie displays a sour attitude in front of the family, causing tension, but they overlook it and inquire about Peter's new girlfriend. Annie asks her brother if he already slept with his girlfriend, which shocks the family. Will scolds her, but Annie directs her anger towards him for sharing her situation with Peter, despite her request for secrecy. She excuses herself from the table and leaves. 
Doug visits and informs them that they found a DNA match on their database, but they don't know yet who it belonged to. He also mentions three other minor victims where the DNA was found, which meant that Charlie has done it before. Annie tries to defend Charlie, suggesting DNA evidence could be flawed, but Doug disagrees. Doug asks if she recognizes the three girls who were assaulted under the same DNA profile, but Annie doesn't, feeling shaken as she steps out of the room. Lynn follows Annie, but fails to find her. Annie rides her bike to meet up with Gail, telling her about the other girls Charlie was involved with. She breaks down in tears, feeling betrayed because she believed Charlie loved her and was special to him, only to discover that there were other girls just like her. Her parents take her home, where Will busies himself analyzing the chat logs. Lynn angrily throws the files, chastising Will for prioritizing something else over their daughter. Will expresses his desire to stop the perpetrator from targeting another girl, but Lynn dismisses his efforts. During volleyball practice, Annie's coach asks her to substitute for another player. While playing, Will spots a familiar face across the bleachers, the owner of the house he had been observing. He confronts the man, and the confrontation escalates into violence, halting the game and causing chaos in the gym. The man's daughter rushes to his aid, while Annie looks at her own father with disappointment. Back at home, Annie berates Will for ruining her life. Will tries to explain that they are both struggling, but Annie reminds him that she's the one who was assaulted, not him. In the hallway, Brittany tells Annie that she has nothing to do with the picture on the internet. Confused, Annie rushes to the library to check it, and she is horrified to find a post featuring her face photoshopped onto a lewd image, promoting herself in a demeaning manner. Annie rushes home and heads straight to her room. She stares at herself in the mirror before sinking into the bathtub, surrounded by pill bottles preparing to record herself. Will receives a call from Lynn, who is crying, and asks if Annie is home. He rushes upstairs and finds the bathroom door locked. With no response from Annie, he's forced to kick the door open, discovering her weakened state from the pills. When Lynn arrives home, Will urgently instructs her to call an ambulance while he helps Annie vomit before getting rushed to the hospital. Upon returning home, Annie sees her father sitting alone outside. Concerned, she asks if he's okay, but Will reflects on how Annie has grown to be fearless and confident. He breaks down, apologizing for not protecting her and feeling like a failure as a father. Annie embraces him, and they cry together as Will expresses his love for her. Meanwhile, somewhere in the world, Charlie, whose real name is Graham, spends time with his son and wife. In a chilling moment, Charlie gives a sinister smile as it's revealed that he was never caught. Did you like our movie recap? Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. To be updated for new movie recaps, hit the notification bell.